Welcome, everyone. Another back and forth with Becker. And we're going to have some fun today. You can see the topics. One big one, what happened to the recession. We're going to dive into that and then have some fun with a lightning round at the end. But Kevin, to start, I'm going to pull up some headlines. It's hard to believe now, but in 2022, it seemed like a foregone conclusion. The yes. world's ending, a recession's coming. And to kind of highlight some of that, here's a few of the, the headlines at the time. This one is from July 2022. Recession's on the way. Consumers say it's already here. Then you have Bezos, November 2022. Same idea that you should reduce risk because recession's coming. Then one of my favorites here, this is from Bloomberg. Yeah. This is October 2022. Their model said there's a recession within a, within a year is 100% probability, Kevin, 100% probability. Not we think it could be coming cloudy with a chance of rain. No, 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 100% probability. And then I get it. It's hard to predict the future, but that was the level uh, of chatter when it came to recession. It seemed like a foregone conclusion. Now I'll pull up this again, same forecaster. This is Bloomberg again, but this is from July of 23. They're now yep. saying, well, maybe 50-50 within a year. So clearly something changed. We went from foregone conclusion to, well, maybe we'll see a recession. What happened? Well, yeah. And I mean, uh, let's face facts. I mean, that 100% recession, yes, it will happen. But is it going to happen now or are we going to go through another sustainable market? And 15 years from now, maybe we're looking at that. There's no conclusion on that. None of those have time frames, but I understand what they're saying. At that October article back basically is at the, the bottom of the market. Yeah. Right at the bottom is when they bottom predicted it. So when things are looking the worst, that's when everybody comes out. The fear mongering begins and the world's coming to an end. Whereas all of a sudden in January, well, things are looking a little better now. Maybe, yeah. maybe we won't get this. And again, I mean, let's let's define what recession basically is. The technical term is sort of two negative quarters of growth. And we haven't really seen that at all. And there's been a variety of reasons for why that hasn't happened. I think we've mm -hmm. seen, you know, interest rates rising. We've had high inflation. But one of the key component components that usually goes along with that is a high unemployment rate. And if anything, that is the last thing that we're seeing. So, you know, yeah. that comfort in a job scenario sort of says, well, I can continue to spend. Job A isn't there. Well, maybe job B is there for me tomorrow. And well, maybe I don't have to worry about not spending. And spending is a huge factor, especially in the U.S. economy, for driving the economic growth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, we're gonna... that's you know, sort of a situation going on at the moment. Yeah, it hit some very key topics. So we're going to go through them one by one. The first one being inflation. You mentioned... yes. I mean, this time last year, inflation, 8 9%, depending on which country you're looking at. And now you're in the three zone pretty much across the board. So mm -hmm. quite a big decline. Part of that base effect, meaning we compare it to last year's numbers. So well, last year, inflation so high, while well, we only had 3% growth off that already high figures. So that is part of it. But also yes. you're seeing things like this, which I'm pulling on the screen. This is from gasbuddy.com. And it looks at the average Canadian price at the pump. So it's, each region is going to be a little different. This is an average, but you can see it kind of peaked in summer last year, then came down quite a bit. And now it's been on the rise in the last couple of months here. But that factors into your inflation figure. Uh, that has a yes. big issue. And then if you look at supply chains, supply chains have definitely improved as well, which is also a big part uh, of the inflation picture. So you have seen some of those inflation pressures ease, which is one of the reasons you'd want to add to, okay, why didn't we see a recession? Well, maybe inflation came down a little faster than many folks were expecting. That whole, oh, yes. we're going to see this double-digit inflation, it's going to be that way for a long time, did not happen. They actually reined it in fairly quickly. And then on the job front, I'll pull up two of the quick ones here, and you can dive into the reasons why. Well, you saw the job openings. You can see this chart. This is U.S. data from the, the Fred. <laughs> Uh, but after the uh, pandemic, it just absolutely skyrocketed. So this is companies posting for jobs, looking for work, and then need some context here. You can't just look at it in isolation. So this one gives you some context. It looks at that job opening number and compares it to the amount of un unemployed people. So you take the amount of unemployed folks, you divide it by the jobs out there, you get a number less than one, which means there's more jobs being posted than there are folks that are unemployed. This is U.S. data. We have a similar scenario in Canada, I think that's the labor market you're referring to, right? Where companies actually can't get enough workers, hard to see a recession when you have so many people employed. Yeah, and again, I mean, some, some of that rationale is because of what happened during the pandemic. You had a lot of people that decided, mm -hmm. you know, do I want to retire now? Maybe they were going an extra five or eight years. They retired then. Now, all of a sudden, that's a job that wasn't expected to be there. You also had a lot of people reevaluating, what do I want to do? Do I want to work in the retail sector, being there during the COVID scenario, frontline or anything else? Or do I want to really go back and find something else that I want to do 
for my career going forward. So I'm not taking just any job anymore. I'm going to wait and see what the ones that are there. So you've had a bit yeah. of a dynamic, uh, the work from home dynamic, the not working from home scenarios. There's a lot of things that play into that whole market as to where it is. But yeah, I mean, as you come out of recession, of course, everything wants to open up. But if you don't have the number of people that want to work, that's going to have a huge factor in what's going on. So those that do mm -hmm. have a lot more choice going forward. Yeah. So, so it, labor force dynamics, back. you're correct. The labor yep. force kind of shrank because you had, for the most part, the, the folks near retirement said, well, I don't want to deal with all this. And they're just retired because yep. they're already on the doorstep of retirement. So that kind of shrunk the, the top end of the labor force. Then you had the, the young folks kind of saying, well, I don't want to do service work in the pandemic, kind of demanding more wages. But your prime age workers, this is true in Canada and the U.S., which they usually define somewhere between the ages of call it 25 and 55, they are highly employed. You're talking re almost record levels of employment for yeah. that group. So the folks that are supposed to be driving the economy are doing exactly that. It's the other pieces where you've seen the labor force shrink a bit. But the, the combination, right? Very tight labor market, fiscal, st fiscal stimulus, which we haven't talked about yet, but there's a lot of fiscal stimulus. Uh, the combination led to this, consumers spending money. This is real personal consumption expenditures. This is adjusted for inflation. So you can't just say, hey, prices are higher. So of course they're spending more. This tries to factor that in. It, it's slowed down recently, but clearly it's still on the rise, right? Hard for an economy to yep. slow when folks are still spending money. And it's not as if they're just completely going into debt because they have jobs. We just talked about that. So that's key part of it. And then I'll flip to this guy as well. It gives you an idea of what businesses are doing. This is specifically manufacturing numbers, uh, what they call core CapEx. So it's their businesses spending for investing into core capital goods in the manufacturing sector. And that's still on the rise. So if you think about it in this terms, maybe it's just this simple, Kevin, that there is some fiscal stimulus. There's a bit of job market shrinkage. But overall, what that means is people have jobs, people have money, they're spending that money. And now companies are investing as well. Like it's pretty hard to see a recession when that's the core basis that you're seeing. Well, exactly. And I mean, some of this aspect still is some of the things that have been done in the last little while are all laggards. We will never find out we're in a recession until actually the recession has happened. That's yeah. when we find out we had a recession. And option number two that goes along with those sort of scenarios is interest rate increases have all had an effect on the inflation scenario. But how's that going to affect the housing market and everything else? We may not know for another year or two because mortgages may not come due off that small rate to the higher rates mm -hmm. in a quick sane. So we could see that, yeah, this may have a big detriment on, on consumer spending a year from now, six months from now. It may not have an effect at all based on the job scenario and everything else. But these are all things that are going to factor into it. And that's probably why, you know, oh, we were having a recession in 2022. And well, it was definitely one in 2023. And now we're pushing back to, are we going to have one at all? <laughs> so yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, lots of factors that go into it, but you're right. That's what's happened. And that's basically the reason why we haven't hit recession yet is because yeah. of the key points that we just touched on. And we did a video a little while back about kind of the effectiveness of monetary policy versus fiscal policy. Maybe monetary policy interest rates went up and it really did hit certain sectors of the economy. And you yes. named one there being the housing market, mortgage market be another. You could talk about tech and the ability to get financing being a third there. Those ones did take a hit. And if you were working in one of those areas, it definitely felt like a recession. But the economy as a whole is much larger and much more driven by consumption and consumers. And they were fine. They were working. They had money. They were spending money. So maybe the monetary policy as a tool is far more blunt than we really thought, or at least it is now. And it hit a couple of sectors but it didn't really impact the overall economy. And maybe all the forecasting models haven't been finely tuned to address that yet. I don't know, but it's certainly one other point that we can consider. And we can ramble about this probably for about six more days, talking about what happened, what didn't happen, <laughs> where things could be going. But I think we hit the key points there. And now we're going to have a little bit of fun That's with right. a lightning round here, Kevin. Uh, all right. Rapid fire questions. We'll put people on the hot seat. Do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? What are you feeling? No, I, I always take the first blow. Yeah. First one into the foxhole <laughs> always gets shrapnel and everything else. So let's go. You're, that way the and here, Kevin. Kevin. You're on the front line. On the front <laughs> line. I'm all set. All right. I'm going to start off here. Barbenheimer. Ooh, ooh. Big movie, it's all summer. We've both seen Oppenheimer. I've seen Barbie, and Barbie is the number one movie for a number of weeks in a row. I gotta know, Kevin, when have you seen Barbie? What do I see, or when am when I seeing? When are you seeing it? When are you gonna go see Barbie? I, you know what, I, I would like to say I'm not seeing Barbie until it comes out on TV, <laughs> but I inevitably know that my wife will drag me there. So I would say by the end of September, I will have seen Barbie. I, against my better judgment, I will have seen Barbie by then. 
cultural phenomenon now. I'm number one of the box offers for multiple weeks in a row. Just out of yep. curiosity, I think you need to check it out just to see what it's all about. Uh, financial question for you. We talked interest rates as one of the factors that may have led to lower inflation. Rates going up. When do you see the first rate cut from the Bank of Canada? Ooh, I'll stroke that one off my questions to go with. <laughs> I actually, I am going to say that the first rate cut will come by the end of 2024. Uh, I mean, let's remember, the beginning of this year, they were all calling for two rate cuts before the end of this year. I, I cannot significantly see that happening with inflation being sticky at 3%. Again, I can't see them dropping it early, but I think that if this works its way through, if mortgages come due and everything else, you're probably going to see there's going to be some stimulus that comes, and I will go with the end of 2024. There we go. Tech led the charge early this year. That was like by far the winner, anything tech related. We're seeing a bit of a turn, a bit of rotation in the last couple of months. Tech kind of falling off, energy kind of bouncing back. Which sector leads the charge in the back portion of the year? I, oh, tech leads, leads the charge. Well, I think if we're going to have any sort of scenario, I, I've seen telecom just destroyed in the last little while. So I think that eventually people are going to see that you know, there is still money to be made in the telecom market. I mean, everybody still uses a cell phone. They still have to upgrade. The costs are not going down by any stretch of the imagination. And I think they've been overkilled recently. So I think the tech or the tech, uh, not tech, the telecom sector has a good, decent chance to do something in the back half of the year. There could be some relative strength there if it bounces back. All right, we'll switch yep. gears. I'll let you fire away. I'll get ready to answer some questions. You got All your right. questions I may, ready? I may do some of the other odds and ends, but now, based on the way that the Winnipeg Jets are constructed at present, and we're not at the season yet, so there may be some things, but at present, the team that they have, assuming that what they're on there is going into this season, are they a playoff team or not? Ooh, for the current construction, I have to say no. I mean, that would be tough. That would be tough. Maybe I'm wrong. You never know how they're going to play, how they're going to gel and come together. You could always get a call up that kind of surprises and surpasses expectations. But on paper right now, I'd say no, not a playoff contender. Okay. Now, back to the market sort of scenario. We've seen the S&P got destroyed in 2022. It's had a really nice comeback in 2023. Yeah. The TSX, on the other hand, has been a little bit, didn't go bound as much in 2022 and has been sort of range bound in 2023. Based on what's going on right now, does the TSX finish positive or negative for the year? I think it's going to be positive in 2023. I don't think it'll be as big as the U.S. I think the back portion of the year it might outperform the U.S. So maybe a couple of months there where it's going to lead. And I think it'll largely be on the base of energy because Canada's not diversified. We're very much in a couple of sectors, energy being one of them. So if we get some energy outperformance, I think that leads to TSX outperformance. But over so positive for the year. But to be clear, the first chunk was all U.S. and they had some really big gains in the S&P. Yeah. So I think 2023 overall, S&P is going to have bigger gains than the TSX, but TSX will be positive. Yeah, and on that last sorry, so I'm going to go. The World Athletic Championships in track and field are coming up in Europe in the next little while. How many gold medals will Canada win? Oh, track and field. That's not normally our strong suits. Uh, I, I'd love to say there'd be a handful of gold medals. Hard to guess. If I had to pick a number, it's a single digit number, maybe nine. Okay. That's a possibility. It's definitely worth seeing, and we'll see from there. Now, that sort of calls all my questions, but I do have to have one Barbie question for you because you mentioned Go the first thing. Barbie is now the number one grossing movie of all time for Warner Brothers. Does Barbie become the number one grossing movie of all time? Ooh, of all time? Yeah. Like inflation adjusted or just in general and gross figures there? Because you have to go way In general and gross. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think okay. so. You, you, you're contending with the Avengers there. You, you got Titanic in the mix. No. Uh, for 2023, I think for sure. Oh, definitely. Be a big that, movie that's what I'm saying. Of all time, no, I don't think it happens. Okay. No, I think that does it. I, I've done my questions. You've solved them all really well. We're good to go going forward. Again, on the bottom, if you want to have answers to any of the stuff that we've talked about here or any of the previous videos or some financial information, where do we go, Clint? Chat with Clinton, Kevin .com. Part of our website, we'd love for you to visit. You fill in the form. Questions come right to us. We'll get back to you as fast as we can. We'll leave it there for today. We'll be back again soon with another video. Take care, everybody.